Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be tuning in. Thank you for stopping by. This is the McGuire Code. I am Kevin, and today we've got another Nintendo Direct to watch and react to. And I'm so happy that you guys are here to join me in this because a couple weeks ago we did one of these for the European Nintendo Nindies Direct that was just dropped on us kind of out of nowhere. I don't know if it was rumored to be happening, but I woke up that morning. Nintendo was putting out a Nintendo Direct, and uh, we watched it and we reacted to it, and it was a lot of fun. If you missed that, you can go back and watch that. Uh, it is on YouTube, and I think it's still archived here on Twitch. I'm not entirely sure. Today, we have the North American Nindies Nintendo Direct that apparently has just wrapped up. I haven't watched it yet. I've seen a couple things on my Twitter feed pop in. I try to avoid that because I do want to watch this with a fresh and open mind. And uh, we'll see what happens and we'll kind of react to it as we go. I don't know how many of these things will be the same from stuff that we have already seen. I think there's already been some rumors and some reports that some of the stuff that could be shown off here was already going to be planned or was announced. And, but maybe now we're getting a confirmation from Nintendo. I don't know exactly how it goes. But um, I would imagine if this is like previous Nintendo Directs for these independent developers, I think we might see a couple games added to the eShop immediately today, maybe during the broadcast, maybe afterwards, maybe while we're streaming, I don't know. But I think we'll see some release dates for some of these things. And again, we may have already seen some of these titles that have been in previous the previous Nintendo Direct in Europe two weeks ago. We're going to find out. So, without any further ado, let's just get right into it. Um, I want to get people a chance to hop in. Uh, let me turn this music down here. I mean, I like the music, but hey. Alright, so, before actually, before we get into the, the live feed, let me just uh, address a couple things. Yes, it's been a couple weeks. Uh, I was on vacation last week. I took my Switch with me. I got through a book that I was that I wanted to read at the beach. I read that, and then I only packed one book. So I had a full day at the beach with nothing else to do, so I made sure the Switch was charged. Yes, I took the Switch to the beach. I didn't get any sand in it, though, so kudos to me. I uh, played some Mario Kart, played some Shovel Knight. Um, you know, kind of reconnected with some of those older games that have been sitting on my Switch for a while. Uh, certainly Shovel Knight and got through some of the challenges. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the next independent game that I download to the Switch may be. Now, obviously, we still are waiting for more details, I think, from Nintendo as far as the Nintendo Switch Online is concerned. We can address that later uh, after we watch this Nintendo Direct. And then we'll talk about what what's going to happen in the next month because Nintendo Switch Online is coming in the second half of September. I don't know if there's an official release date or launch date for that just yet. If there is and I missed it, again, I was at the beach last week. I was kind of unplugged for the most sense from uh, social media and all the news that was going on. So if I missed anything, I apologize. Don't hold it against me, please. Okay, uh, we are good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, load up the webcast stream. Here we go. We're going to watch the North American Nintendo Direct. Now, I think everything should be good to go here. Uh, this was the archive of their live broadcast that they just had, so that's why you see the, the play bar. We've already uh, fast-forwarded to about the 24-minute mark, and let's see what happens here. Oh, and one thing, one other thing I want to make sure. I believe my stream labels are good to go. Uh, I know that that was a problem the last time we added a new follower. It didn't automatically update. Uh, it looks like it's updated now, but... Should anybody decide to follow today, we'll see if it works. <laughs> I'm not begging for followers, believe me, but I do want to see what happens. So hopefully it'll work uh, if we get anything like that. We are on the path to affiliate. We do have uh, we do have some plans to get uh, this feed and this channel and on, on Twitch as well as on YouTube going. I'll talk about that stuff later. Let's watch the Nintendo Direct. Let's not waste any more time. Well, let's hop right on in, guys, and let's see what Nintendo has to offer for us today. All right, first things first, let's make sure it's actually working. That would be the first key. All right, so it looks like I need to fast forward a little bit. All right, here we go. Let's see if this works. All right, it sounds like it's working on my end, so hopefully it's working for you too. Nintendo Indies, here we go. Here we go. I got my Switch here. I'm ready to download some new hey games, everyone. guys. Hey, Kirk Scott with the publisher and developer relations team here Kirk at Nintendo Scott. of America. 
Think of me as your friendly neighborhood indie guy. As many of you know, <laughs> we like to keep you updated on games you'll be able to play soon. So with summer winding down, it's time to check out some of the great indie games heading to Nintendo Switch. Let's do it. Before we get in too deep, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Nintendo of Europe who just released a video highlighting some of the great indie Oh, what just happened? Indie content okay, there we go. Celebration of Gamescom. If you missed it, we'll include a link at the end of this video. Think of this video as part two with even more content that our okay. talented indie partners across the globe are bringing to Nintendo Switch. So we're going to get some okay, fresh content here. Let's get into it. First up, set your engines for hyper speed. A world ravaged by its dark and violent past, Hyperlight Drifter is inspired by dreams and nightmares. You play as the Drifter, plagued by mysterious illness, traverse a vast, ruined world wielding forgotten technology only you can use to find a cure. And it looks like we've uncovered some exclusive content for Nintendo Switch. Check out this outfit. With this equipped, the Drifter can better locate secrets like gear bit crates and Drifter bones. There are also a couple new weapons, including the Crystal Shot and the Deadly Blade Caster, the reward for completing Tower Climb, right. which is exclusive for the Nintendo Switch. Looks pretty sweet. You won't have to wait long to explore the land of buried time. Hyperlight Drifter Special Edition is available for pre-purchase today. All right, so that's coming September, September 6th. 6th. Never heard of this game before, but again, another game coming to Switch. Towerfall. Six player battle mode. Again, this is another game that may have already been out there. I, I'm not too familiar with a lot of the independent games, so forgive me for that. But this game looks kind of fun. And uh, okay, so this looks like it's a. Uh, uh, it keeps glitching out on me. Sorry about that. So that looks pretty cool. So this is like, um, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it's kind of like a Smash Brothers Battle Royale type of a game. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. All right, I'm going to have to take a look at that one. September 27th, Towerfall. Looks, right, that one looks pretty Towerfall fun. Towerfall is an archery combat game for up to six players. Perfect for competitive local play on the Nintendo Switch system. With simple controls, everyone can jump in, but only the fiercest friends can master the Yeah, this game looks like it could be a lot of fun. Secure victory. Towerfall includes all the Ascension and Dark World add-on content, and four additional variants have been added, which give you over 90 options to customize your multiplayer. Since this game is created by Matt Makes Games, we're pleased to announce a special character, er, characters, <laughs> that are joining the fray. Madeline and her reflection, Madeline. Together, they form one remarkable heroine in the, Celeste. The character from but Celeste. Powerful, a game I have not tried yet, but I've heard so many good things Towerfall about. Ascends onto so, the Nintendo <laughs> Switch on September 27th. She's confirmed for Towerfall, for not, Sm not Smash Brothers, but hey, <laughs> you'll take what you can get. That, look, that game looks pretty fun. I, I might Hook give that shots, one a look. Long shots, grappling hooks. These are a few of my favorite things. They're useful in grabbing something or someone, and in the case of Treasure Stack, All right, so we've got a uh, box. Treasure Stack adds a unique platforming mechanic to the traditional falling block puzzle. We have a nice little puzzle game here, which is good. I, I could use a good puzzle game on my Switch. Navigate the playing field. Precise platforming and mastery of the grappling hook will separate expert stackers from mediocre slackers. Arrange stacks of light colored treasure chests and then connect the corresponding. It's kind of like uh, Wario's Woods, it looks like and to me. Thanks to cross platform play, which a game I'm not very good at at all. More friends and foes in versus mode. Or locally with up to four players. All right, so that's, that looks pretty cool. Onto the Nintendo Switch this winter. Nice little puzzle game. If you're looking for a puzzle game, Zarvat give it a look. A I guess. arcade game about friendship amongst cubes. In what? The game story <laughs> mode. Follow charcoal and mustard's adventure. Oh. through nine worlds. I got a great idea for this game already. Friend. Downloadable content. Fight you can play bananas, as a GameCube. Dangerously frozen. Can we please to make that happen? Is that possible? Play as a GameCube. In this game. mode, challenge your friends to some exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. Five game modes across over a dozen handcrafted origami Thunderdomes. 
play with or against your friends crashing through destructible walls and duking it out with missiles and lasers. And exclusively for Nintendo Switch, play as Joybot, an enemy spawner controlled with a single Joy-Con. Use tilt controls to move Joybot around the map, challenging other on players to take you down. This game looks kind of neat. Launches first on I, I'm Switch telling you, this Nintendo October. has to find a way to have an exclusive character skin or whatever, you heard? so you can play Nintendo's as a game. Night Market is coming to consoles That's just first too perfect. On Nintendo Switch. I missed what you just said. Sorry. All right, so we got a little, little anime game type style here, maybe. No, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Are are they growing cats in their in their field? What the? Was that a milk container? Uh oh. They're coming for you. Okay, so now you're racing on those things. And now we're in the club. <laughs> Minky's Night Market. All right. Don't tell my dog Interesting. this, but late at night, I've been thinking about raising cats, racing cats, and most incriminating of all, petting cats. And thanks to Mineko's Night Market coming first to Nintendo Doesn't really Switch, look like a game I'm that interested that in, but... More. You play as Mineko, looks, it looks a nice. curious girl who just I kinda like the graphic style. I Japanese-inspired island I gotta base of Mount Fuji. Hand it to him for that. Mineko's Night Market boasts over 20 hours of story-based gameplay, including four regions to explore, diverse villagers to meet, quests to undertake, and activities like sewing and woodworking to keep you busy, and in I mean, it looks to me like he's cutting, they're cutting their hands and on most that importantly, there, there but... are cats. Lots of cats. I think I'm gonna pass on this one, to be honest with you. Abe, I have locals worship. no interest well, in it. Well, they believe he's a myth. Maneko's Night Market is open for business in early 2019. If you can convince me otherwise, feel free. I'm willing to enter entertain any argument. Samurai Night? And but a homeless girl. I, I might pass all on that play one. a part in rewriting the fate of Gun City forever. In Samurai Gun 2, play alone. Right, so we got another uh, all new adventure retro mode. bit style. I don't know exactly what you want to call it. Of crisis and discover the mystery behind Gun City's ghost. I feel like threat. this is the the a trend right now pushes to have a game that kind of has that retro pace, feel, an epidemic but modern mechanics, modern uh, on the rise. modern speed. And I don't know. Take a break from Gun City and battle with a group of up to four friends in a classic versus mode. Now with improved controls, new levels, so and this new is, characters. You know, if you have a, that kind Armed of a battle mode, it's kind of like that tower fall game. And three bullets per life, hone your reflexes to dodge an impending doom and send your opponent's heads rolling. You can also enjoy Trigger Soul, the samurai gun graphic novel by French comic artist Valentin Sesh. With smooth touch controls exclusively for the Nintendo Switch version. That's Samurai interesting. Samurai Gun 2 will release in early 2000. I'm not real interested, but again, it's just not my cup of tea, but hey, maybe Don't it's yours. Don't talk to strangers is a rule we learn as children, but after nuclear fallout, some precautions go out the window. In Bullet Age, take on the role of Ash and a mysterious stranger on a quest to save New Haven after Evil Ark's mutagen blast changes it forever. All right. Bullet Age is a co-op action game with an intuitive mix of sword and gun combat, challenging platforming, and a charming cartoon art style. Now it's got co-op gameplay. I'm in. Multiple continents. Upgrade your weapons with unique bullet types and learn new abilities to help you survive the decimated wasteland. I, I might. I can see HD myself Rumble, being interested in this you one. You can feel your attacks and combos gaining strength. Gotta see if I can get my wife to play this one. Secrets. But this game looks Full like it might have a, a shot here. November of this year. For Nintendo Switch this November. Half bot. All right. I'm intrigued by that one. I'm intrigued by that one. The World Next Door is a story-driven game that follows June, a rebellious teen girl trapped in a parallel world inhabited by magical creatures. You will meet and develop friendships with an eclectic cast of characters by means of a reputation system, which features branching dialogue based on your choices. Oh, Advance yeah. the story by defeating your I'm not opponents a huge fan of those types of games. Real-time puzzle battles by activating runes to cast spells. There will also be a local 1v1 versus mode, 
where you can face off in puzzle battles. You can unlock new levels and characters to play as in the story mode. Dropped by the world next door in early Not really feeling that one. World next door. Do you have we'll a see. head for level building? But I'm not. Oh, well, the yes. level head is perfect for you. Scotch. <laughs> level head. Run, puzzle, jump, kick, poke, and shrug. Cross trillions of levels handcrafted by players just like you. Build the like Mario Maker? And other people's nightmares. Level okay. So hey, you know what? You if they can make this work, that should encourage then, Nintendo to bring Mario Maker to the to Switch, all right? Three of your friends for some couch co-op action. And if your buddies are into building two, then dive into the Maker with. I I, I have. Yeah. All right, I'm holding out hope for this one. I want Nintendo to see this game succeed because if it does, Mario Maker's coming to the Switch very quickly if it's not already. <laughs> so let's get behind this game, guys. If you're a Mario Maker fan, get behind this game because. This game looks well, like it's taking some yeah. things that Just Mario Maker could benefit from. About it. Level head. Make fun. I really want to know more about how easy it is to level design the levels. Your creative skills when level head releases this November. Level head November, guys. If you're a Mario Hold Maker fan, hat, give that game a this look. Next game, losing it may cost your life. Crush your friends' hats before they crush yours in King of the Hat. Is that a, a washer? <laughs> Hat-based party game. Matches are short and oh, okay. I've heard about this game. Perfect I think to play on the couch or on the go. Your friends can quickly join the fun thanks to simple two button controls. And you can play with up to four players locally or become king in ranked online multiplayer. Okay, yeah, Choose I've, I've heard about this game. I've never seen it, never played it. Like birthday, whose birthday is every day. But I, I think some people were excited about this game coming to the Switch. So, it, I love the washing machine. Fat cats, dirty loads of laundry. King of the Hat heads out in early That's hilarious. 2019. That's hilarious. Okay, I'm no biologist, but I'm pretty sure geese are at the top of the food chain. Untitled Goose Game is a genre all hey, its own. Hey, do not mess with style, geese. Part sandbox, I'm telling you that right now from personal experience. Simulator. They the are not to be messed with. Focus on slapstick humor as you play the role of the horrible goose. Your goal, should you choose to accept it, is to ruin everyone's day in town. Take on challenges like having a picnic, stealing hats, and generally causing chaos in the lives of the townsfolk. The goose is loose in early 2019. Um. Want some more games to add to your wish list? Let's take a sneak peek yes. at some of the other exciting indie games coming to Nintendo Switch later this year. Show them to me. Oh, here we go. Oh, you don't know Jack? Is that Ninja Gaiden? Two directors, but okay. Oh, it's not Ninja Guide, it just looks like it. Undertale, I think we knew about that one, right? Did I always think that was at E3? Not bad. Not bad. It's just a selection. slice of the awesome indie content you can play on Nintendo I'm not so sure how many I'm ahead. all in on or anything. On it all, we've got your back with a news flash. If you're hungry for indie updates, we're launching a new channel on your Nintendo Switch system dedicated specifically to indie games. Get the latest announcements, That's a good idea. in depth QAs, developer stories, and more. And indie games are all about innovation, so expect the unexpected as well. The Indie Channel is live today, so head to find channels in the news app and subscribe. From all of First, us I think Nintendo, we need to get a little bit of an overhaul there, try to clean some of that stuff up a little on the menu. Their content to Nintendo Switch. I feel and like there's a better way to present all that information. In and supporting indie games. It looks like that's going to be it. Hold on. Hold on. It seems that we have one more announcement before we go. Oh, okay. What is it?
the breach. All oh, available today. Okay, there you go. Is that the only one that was available today? I think that might be it. Yeah, it looks like it. That is it. All right, so I I was actually more interested in the European one, I think, uh, that we saw a couple weeks ago. But not bad, not bad. Uh, saw some things I was interested in. I, I'm actually really excited for that Levelhead game. I think it was called Levelhead. Uh, so I definitely want to give that one a look, and I think I'm going to have to support that one because if that one takes off, I'm telling you, if Nintendo sees that people are flocking to Levelhead, they will have no excuse not to bring Mario Maker to the Switch. Again, I don't know if it's planned for the Switch at any point. They haven't announced it. They've been very they've been very silent on the whole Mario Maker thing. I'm still holding that hope that Mario Maker is going to be an early title that gets connected to the Nintendo Switch Online. I was hoping that that would be a game that would almost launch with the with um, the Nintendo Switch Online service. I guess there's still a chance that could happen, but I feel like we would have known about that by now because the Mario Maker community is it's a very loyal fan base. And you, you see it right here on Twitch. There are people always playing Mario Maker. I just watched the guy, Jack Who was playing it last night. Um, there are people that are always going to be flocking to Mario Maker, and Mario Maker on the Switch would be so great because, let's face it, not a whole lot of people had Wii U, but Mario Maker was still very popular, and it's a very popular game still, I think, on Twitch today. And you still watch, uh, you know, Dashy's still doing YouTube videos with Mario Maker. Mario Maker has to come to the Switch, right? And I don't know when that's going to happen, but if a... Uh, uh, an independent game like let that level maker game takes off mario maker's gotta be right around the corner if it's not already so that that's just my thoughts there i because i want to see mario maker on the switch i really want to see it i'm just very curious about the level creation how easy is it to do because obviously if you have uh, mario maker and you're playing on your tv you're gonna have this sucker in, in your dock so you're not going to be able to you know just point and click where you point and drag point and click wherever you want the pieces to go like you would on the wii u on the gamepad that's the one that's the biggest hurdle i think the switch has had with bringing mario maker to the switch i do think it's going to happen at some point i see no reason why mario maker should not be on the switch that's all i'm saying i've said that since the switch launched and i'm surprised that we haven't seen any announcements on mario maker but as far as the independent titles are concerned let me reiterate some of my thoughts from the uh, european one from a couple of weeks ago i love that the Nintendo Switch is being a go-to destination for a lot of these independent developers, whether they are bringing new, fresh content to the system, or they're bringing games that have been out for a while, maybe on Steam or maybe on PlayStation or Xbox. Uh, you know, people have been playing these games, but now they're you know kind of updating them a little bit and bringing the bringing them to the Switch so you can take it on the go, play it at home. The Switch is a great platform for an independent title, and I think we're seeing more and more that. It, the Switch continues to be much easier to develop for than the Wii U was. That was always the case uh, going in with the production of the Switch. That was the number one goal for Nintendo, I think. Did they show off the showcase yet? Yeah, we actually just finished watching the... Uh, it actually just wrapped up. It wasn't all that long. It was probably about... Maybe about 16 minutes total. Uh, there was new content that we didn't see uh, a couple weeks ago. Again, some of the titles were probably... Uh, rumored or announced, but now we actually got the footage of it. So uh, the showcase, you can watch it on Nintendo's YouTube page. That's what we just did. Or you can watch, I'm going to guess you can probably watch it on their Twitch page. Uh, so if you want to go check that out, Mirage Leonardo 84, go ahead and do that. Um, there were some good things there. I, like I said uh, originally, I was actually more interested in some of the games that we saw a couple weeks ago um, that we saw in that Nintendo Direct for the Nindies. Uh, for the the European version, but you know a lot of those games are coming to North America if they aren't here already either. So I mean, there's not a whole lot of difference there. It's just a matter of who gets to uh, show it off first. So, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm intrigued by some of the games. I might have to wait a little bit longer. Onimusha Warlords just got announced for Nintendo Switch today, January release date. I know nothing about the game. I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm not a great. Uh, uh, resource for this kind of information, but I will give it a look and see what it says. What's the game about? If you don't mind me asking, is that what kind of a game is it? Uh, feel free to feel, clue me in and try to sell me on the game. There were a lot of titles that I think we just saw that, you know, I I could easily pass on. But if you, anybody wants to convince me to give one a try, 
I'm all ears. I'm always up into suggestions. If you have uh, games you want to recommend, games you want to see me play, maybe on the YouTube channel. I don't stream Nintendo Switch or PlayStation 4 because my hardware is just not not uh, capable of doing so nicely. So I usually reserve that stuff for the YouTube channel. Speaking of which, I am continuing to upload my playthrough of the story mode in Madden NFL 19 <laughs> on the YouTube page. Just uploaded part... Five, I think, went up today. Part six is scheduled for tomorrow. Or it was part six this morning and part seven tomorrow. I've already lost track because I'm uploading so many and putting the videos together. I actually have one more video I need to record for that, but that will be done and ready to go by the weekend. And uh, so if you are interested in the story mode in Madden NFL 19, check out the YouTube page. You can check out the YouTube banner down below. Uh, I've got a whole playlist, so any new video that goes into that specific game it's going to be added to that playlist. Like Resident Evil 2 in Japan with Samurai, basically. It came out in 2001 for PS2, Capcom game. Uh, six games were made. Oh, okay, cool. So, four, four canon, two or not. All right, so, a couple things there. It's a game from 2001 for the PlayStation 2, made by Capcom. These are all promising things to me. I'm encouraged by that. And I would suggest that um, you know we may see more of those games. Again, th th these are the types of games that are typically being brought to all the modern consoles anyway. If people liked them back then, and people are going to still like them now. They want to play them again. I don't know if they're polishing it up a little bit. I would imagine that's probably the case. Um, you know, you, you can clue me in on that as well. But um, again, I like the fact that the Switch is becoming a platform that can play a lot of these games that many gamers you know like myself included that didn't have PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3 for a long time or you know never really gamed on anything outside of Nintendo the fact that we're able to play a lot of these games now I think is fantastic uh, it just goes to show that Nintendo developed the switch to make it incredibly easier or at least easier for developers to bring these types of games to a Nintendo console because they weren't on the Nintendo 64 they weren't on the GameCube. They weren't on the Wii. Obviously, they weren't on the Wii U. But now it feels like uh, Nintendo is... Nintendo is showing they're back in the game. <laughs> There's no question about that. Nintendo, you know, Nintendo's back. And they still have some hurdles that they have to clear, if we're being honest. And we're going to see what this Nintendo Switch Online has to offer. And how much of that can be cleaned up. Uh, so they're not without their shortcomings, if I'm being totally honest with you. And... You know, I love Nintendo. I absolutely love Nintendo. I've been a long time Nintendo fan. I want to see Nintendo succeed, and I want to see them get things right. And I think that they are getting a lot more things right today than they have for a number of years. I've always appreciated their ability to you know, think outside the box and try new things, like we saw with the Wii with motion controls. Thought that was a gimmick. You know, sort of it was, but it worked. <laughs> and then uh, the Wii U... Let's not speak of the Wii U. I love the Wii U, okay? I love the Wii U, but it was a complete failure from start, from the very start that it was announced, and uh, they never really were able to win back anybody. Uh, but I'm very curious to see where the Switch is. The Switch is in a great spot right now. I mean, you see the sales numbers. You see the support that it is getting from third-party developers. I think we still want to see some more from some of the bigger names in the game uh, as far as third party developers are concerned EA I think EA Sports that's the biggest one I think I think a lot of people would like to see a little bit more out of uh, on the uh, Nintendo Switch and moving forward and maybe we'll get there I still think it's uh, they're trying to warm up a little bit to the system but you're seeing some other pro uh, other developers other big name developers bring some big franchises to the Switch so it, it may not be quite up to par technically with what you'll see on the PlayStation 4 or Xbox or obviously the PC but the fact that you're seeing these types of games brought to the Switch is huge and that's why I think going back to these independent developers giving them these platforms to really let the Switch shine and show what can be done it, it builds support it builds a community and I think that that's what the Nintendo Switch is thriving on and what it can thrive on moving forward and maybe that'll lure some of those bigger names to try a little bit more with some of the franchises. Again, some companies are doing great uh, bringing their franchises to Nintendo, but you know, I think it's fair to say that you still want to see a little bit more from a couple of them. So, it'll get there. Supposedly, at Best Buy now, you can get a Nintendo Switch bundle with a physical copy of Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. 
also Salt and Sanctuary is getting a physical special edition next month. I think I heard about Salt and Sanctuary. I don't know anything about the game, but I think I, that sounds familiar from something I had seen at some point in time. Um, Best Buy, Nintendo Switch bundle with a physical copy of Mario Rabbids. It doesn't surprise me. I I don't think it's packed in together, right? It, or or is it? I, you know, sometimes they sell you the system and then you get the copy of the game, but it's not actually all in one package, but you get it as part of a deal. Uh, that would not surprise me. I think that's a good idea. And uh, certainly, I think that the, the Mario Kart bundle, was it a Mario Kart bundle? There's definitely a Mario Tennis Aces, Mario Aces Tennis, whatever. There's definitely one of those bundles. Uh, I thought there was a Mario Kart bundle. If not, I think we're getting one. I would imagine there's going to be a Smash Brothers bundle at uh, towards in September for the holiday. That's one of the reasons I love the Switch so much is because of all the indie game support. Yeah, like I said, it's a great platform for independent developers to put something out there. And I think it's great that Nintendo has made that happen. Uh, because not only can you play them at home, but you can play them on the go. And you don't have to switch between uh, a home console and a portable console like you have had to do in the past uh, with... Um, you know, the Wii, Wii U, and your 3DS or 2DS. Uh, or uh, I guess the same thing is mostly similar for Sony fans who have a, a PlayStation and a Vita. I don't know if that's going to be a problem for too much longer. But <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I think that's you know, that's one of the main, se main selling points for the Switch. Not just that it is a, a platform for independent developers, but the fact that you can put something on here. Uh, plug it in to your TV or just take it on the go. That's what, you know, I play a lot of these games on the go. Um, you know, I, I have a good handful of independent game, independent developer games uh, on my Switch, but I don't play a lot of them on the TV. I actually play games like Shovel Knight or you know, Steam World Dig or something like that. I actually play that more when I'm on the go, or on a train, on a plane, um, on the beach. <laughs> so that's, that's why... I, that's the way I've been experiencing a lot of these games. So that's why I haven't really... You know, I still have Hollow Knight on here, and I have not played it yet. I didn't play it once at the beach, unfortunately. Uh, but I do. I am going to play that game, and I think I'm going to do a playthrough video series for that one on the YouTube channel. So there's... You know, the backlog is getting pretty big already on this thing. I'm still trying to get through a lot of the games right now. Um, but yeah, and then there's more coming. So I mean, And the, the best part about the, these independent developers are they have games that are for everybody out there. You know, if you know a lot of the games, like I said, a lot of the games that we saw in this presentation weren't necessarily things that I was interested in, uh, for the most part. But it, you know, I understand a lot of people are going to be attracted to those types of games, like the like the Smash Brothers type of uh, fighters. I'm not a huge fighting game guy, so I don't get all excited about Smash Brothers the way a lot of people do. But you know, you have a a low budget Smash type of game that has some interesting game mechanics and gameplay in it, you know, I might give it a look. Uh, but, the, you know, like I said, that's just me. Uh, like, and that's what's great about it because there are developers making games for every genre, for every fan base out there. You like a fighting game? There's going to be something there. You like puzzle games? There's plenty there. Real-time strategy? There's something there for you. And these developers are doing it out of the love and the passion that they have for creating games. And, yes, yeah, sometimes they're not great at the launch, but they will take the time, hopefully, they will take the time to address the concerns that anybody has to make their pr game and their product better. And that's why you see, I, I think that, that Morphe's Law game just came out and there were a lot of problems and concerns with it when it launched. But I think the developer, I don't remember who develops that game, but they, they addressed it pretty quickly with a patch or two or something like that. So I don't know exactly what the status is. It's a game I was interested in. I just haven't tried it out yet, haven't downloaded it yet. But you see developers taking care of their other products because they want people to enjoy them. And I think I think sometimes that happens a little faster from those independent developers than you may get from the big name companies. Because they don't have as they don't have as wide of a margin for error. You know, you know a, a company like EA puts out a game, you know, they'll put out they can put out a patch, but there's you know, there's there may not be a careful attention to detail that's quite as you know, refined as what a third-party developer may have in their in their game in their product. So that's just that's just what I think. All right. So any of these new titles that were just announced are any of them interested to you guys? Uh, anything that you think I should check out? Uh, 
I'll reiterate one more time. I'm all in on level maker. I think it was called. I don't remember now exactly what it was called. Uh, but I'm I'm interested in that one. I definitely want to see that succeed because I want to see Mario Maker on the Switch, and I think that's a great stepping stone to convincing Nintendo to bring it to the Switch if they haven't already. Let's talk about the next month for the Nintendo Switch. All right, so. Uh, Nintendo Switch Online coming out second half of September. We don't know exactly what date that is, uh, but let's just say the last two weeks of September. I think uh, Amazon has the September 30th date on their website. Uh, as I believe Wolf Den posted in their YouTube page today, you don't really need to buy that so much because Amazon always has placeholder dates. So I agree, and I agree with that. I, I second. I second that <laughs> opinion. So, but second half of September, that's when Nintendo Switch is coming. What we don't know is, well, we still don't know a lot, actually. I mean, we do know a lot, but we still have a lot of questions that need to be addressed. All right, so I already know that I'm going to be going with the $20 charge for a full year service because I'm going to use the service. I, I know it. Uh, because there are games I already own that I think we're going to require that, like Mario Kart. Uh, and there are games that I am going to own that I believe are going to be tied to it. I'm going to guess Super Mario Party would be a nice little online game, finally. Uh, obviously, Smash Brothers is going to be out there, so they have to have that ironed out. I'm more interested in the, uh, the game collection, the game library that they're going to include with the 20 NES games, and I'm sure they're going to build off of that with some Super Nintendo, maybe Nintendo 64 relatively soon. GameCube, hopefully. Hopefully GameCube. I don't know how it's going to work, but I hope so. <laughs> um, but I, I feel like between now and the launch of that, there's still a few weeks where Nintendo can put in a Direct to really give us a full run-through of what to expect with the service. I'm talking about all the details that we need to know, what's going to be included, uh, I know they've already addressed a lot of this information, but we still have some concerns, still have some questions about what this is going to do. Are we going to be able to download these classic games onto our console that we can play offline? That would be fantastic. I, that's what I'm hoping. Um, you know, if you want to give me the games that I can play only online as part of the, the fee, that's fine. But if I had the option of spending another couple bucks to maybe download a game that I can just have on my switch and I can have it offline I'm down with that I would I would definitely be interested in that uh, oh, already read that comment okay so that's that's something that I hope is out there I'm not holding out a whole lot of hope that that's going to be the case I really just it's just kind of my imagination running wild and hoping that we'll get that maybe we'll get a discounted rate on that if you know you put the game in the eShop or something like that I don't know how that all works but I'm curious about it. I don't know how many times I'm going to play a lot of those classic Nintendo games like Balloon Fight and Tennis and Soccer. In fact, I pro will probably never play Soccer. I will probably never play Tennis. Um, but it's nice that those you know those are the uh, founding games of the NES library. So it's nice to have them preserved. So I'll give them that. Um, you know, honestly, I don't know how many times I would play Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario Brothers Three with somebody online. Uh, but if I can have that on my Switch at any point and I can play those games, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, we also, the, the voice chat si situation, I'm not so sure it's going to be uh, cleaned up as much as we want early on. I do think at some point, though, uh, Nintendo is going to do away with that little mobile app and just have it all run through this thing. It's too easy not to do that. I really think that that's something they, they will realize at some point they need to simplify uh, because it's too complicated right now. Nobody wants to use their phone. Nobody wants to use their phone. Um, I don't know what the download numbers are like for the Nintendo app or what the usage is like for the Nintendo uh, online app on your phone, but there is no way you can have an online service and we still require people to get their phone and log in to do the voice chat and set up things. That's gotta be simplified, that's gotta be cleaned up. I don't know if it's gonna happen right away, but it would be nice if Nintendo put out direct and say, we've heard your concerns, we simplified it, all you gotta do is plug a headset into your Switch and you're good to go. Or, I guess the question is, wireless headset, because if you have this thing in your dock, 
you know you can't use your heads you're probably not using your headset <laughs> plugged into this so what are the other options that we have bluetooth is that possible <laughs> there's got to be a wireless there's got to be a wireless headset option that allows you to have voice chat with people on the online service so let's hope that that's going to be something that gets addressed at some point in time uh what else guys what else do you want to see from the nintendo online switch nintendo switch online uh voice chat it does look like you're still going to be able to do a game like fortnite without the online service which i think is fine uh which, which actually i think is great uh because it's already built in to the the game as is so you know obviously this is going to vary by game but i think more and more games are going to require you to have the online uh, membership especially if it's a nintendo published game the third party developed game like epic games you know they put out a game but they're going to do it their own way which is fine um which is fantastic. All right, guys. I think we are going to wrap that up right now. Phillies have just traded for Jose Bautista. They gave a player to be named to or cash to the Mets. Joey Bats coming to South Philly. So if you're a Phillies fan, looking for some offense, that's good news. Maybe. We'll see. All right, guys, I am going to go and uh, figure out what we're going to do next. <laughs> I've got to get back to some work. Let's play some music here on our way out here. Um, trying to say when we're going to do streaming next. I don't know. Not sure when the next stream is going to be, but stay tuned. I'm probably going to have another stream some point this week. Probably Thursday. What's say? Wednesday? Oh, tomorrow's Thursday. No, today's Tuesday. Say Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. All right, so I might stream a little bit on Thursday. We'll do some actual gameplay, I think. Uh, but then I should be caught up with a lot of the assignments I have going on right now. And I should be all good with my video series for Madden NFL 19 on YouTube. Make sure you check out the YouTube page. Subscribe to that. Check out the videos there. Leave your comments down there as well. Until next time, everybody. Thank you for watching today. We'll do more of these. Anytime Nintendo has a Direct that fits into my schedule as nicely as it did today. Hint, hint. Thank you, Nintendo. Um... We'll do some more of these. If you want to see some other reactions to other presentations, let me know. Uh, just shoot me a text, not a text, but a message on Twitter at the McGuire Code. Uh, let me know what's going on. If you want me to cover anything, I'll see what I can do. No promises, but we'll try to do it. We'll definitely do some Nintendo stuff, of course, because I'm a big Nintendo fan. All right, guys, I'm going to go get some lunch, get back to work, and I'll see you later. Have a good day, guys. Have a good afternoon. Have a good rest of the week if I don't see you. And until next time, everybody, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.